Today, the last of Arabella's bronze tie rods get installed, and then work continues on the housetop. And later in the episode, Steve will take a minute to talk about how all these new pieces are working together. Thanks for watching, and we hope you take a sec to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. One more tie rod to go, and they are all in. I'm gonna leave these in the hatches kind of long for now, because um, we wanna, I wanna put in some uh, like adjusters, I don't know what you really call them, but they would hold the hatch up, so you could crack the hatch or you could have it partially open, and I think these would be a really good attachment point for that. So those would go on after the nut, and then we can put on maybe like an acorn nut, make it look nice and keep it from uh, stabbing anybody. But for now, we'll, we'll put something on these ones in the hatch where we'll be going in and out. Uh, but the other places, the bolts, you know, they're not too big of a deal. Just gotta be mindful of your surroundings. the last of the tie rods. Now I just gotta go through and put all the nuts and washers on them, which is a lot of nuts and washers. <laughs> so what these are doing is they're holding this carlin to the shelf so that this can't expand at all when we go in and cock the deck. Uh, and there's gonna be, much like the house, there'll be a sill here that gets screwed and bolted down really well to this. And that's what I'll, uh, we'll be pushing against. And the other thing that these are gonna be kind of nice for is you can reach them inside the boat. So if you are sitting on the saloon you know, seats, you're gonna be able to reach up and grab one of these rods if you want. We can also tie things to them, hang things inside with them. I think they'll be kind of nice to have. Uh, they're a little more, we put in more than Akin specified, but in all the research I've done, uh, basically everything said you should have, ideally, one tie rod for every short beam and that's what we ended up doing. <clears throat> and that way that we don't have any really big spans where these locust um, carlins are going to want to bend. These should hold it in tension. And the welds aren't the prettiest, but they don't have to be. You'll never see them in the finished boat. And that length of weld on both sides is way more than adequate. I think the weakest part of these would be the nut and the thread on the end. Uh, so these are going to be incredibly strong, even though they're just 3 8 rod. All right, time to grab a pocket full of nuts and a pocket full of washers and a wrench and start putting all the nuts on.
nice and tight. All right, so you notice that these are counterboard and the ones along the house are not. And the reason for that is the cockpit's gonna drop down in here, so we'll have to trim these flush so that the cockpit can slide past them. And along in the inside of the house, we've got a plan to cover those up. We'll get to that later. Uh, but that's why these ones are counterboard. So we gotta do the two on the starboard side here, and that's it. All the tie rods are in and tight, and uh, it's another thing to, to check off the to-do list. So this weekend, Steve and Satchel worked together and managed to get all of the tie rods built and installed in the Arabella, and they look great. It's really tying everything together, and they do look like they're gonna be pretty uh, visible and grabbable inside, which is exactly what we wanted um, for clipping things off of them and for grabbing onto. Um, so that's really, really cool. So the next step is going to be to finish up the house side mock-up um, and to finalize the installation of the sill plate. So when I built the sill plate, um, we were kind of running up against time because we had a friend that was coming over to help us out. So Casey came to help us install these. Um, so we got them to the point where they fit really well and we could put these right up against them, but the corners still need to be cut down and they need to be um, thicknessed. Uh, the entire sill plate is gonna be two and a quarter all the way around. And on the ends, they're still a little proud. Uh, I used that to make sure I didn't get myself in trouble, sneak up on it. So once the sill plate is cut on the corners properly and is thicknessed, we're gonna to need to mark for the bolts that go through. Because remember the house sides are gonna get built up on top of this sill plate and then a bolt is gonna come through to secure it. Now we need to make sure that this rod that goes through doesn't land on the short beams because otherwise we're gonna hit the screws that they are tying them in and they can't land on the tie rods. And the last thing is, is they can't go uh, through the port lights. So we're gonna to have to find exactly where we want all of these situated. Um, and then we can decide where the screw fasteners are gonna go in for the sill plate. So my next task here is going to mark where these rods go. And then we can take all this down, take the sill plate up and I can cut those, thickness them, and we can put everything back where it needs to be. It's not perfect, but it kind of gives us an idea. And we can rig that up to be uh, pretty stable, I think, pretty easily. Cool.
see if I did this right over the tree. Might have to like rack it to get it to go in there. Yeah. I'm not sure because I didn't measure any angles. I just floor would come up a little bit, yeah. but at the same time we're also probably going to be sitting on cushions. Yeah. So I think if the floor were to come up an inch and your butt were to come up a couple inches, you'd be in great yeah. shape. And even this, I mean, like, a decent 90. Yeah. And it's shallower up there, deeper in the stern, so it would feel a little deeper. It's also narrower in the stern. Yeah, I mean, even here it feels comfortable I and mean, like that. And even if it was too deep, you could always later make a uh, slats to put on the bottom. To raise it. To raise it. And yep. the water would slow it down. Or if it's too shallow, we can just get some thicker cushions. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there will be some fine tuning with the room. Cool. I want to make the tiller, I think, be able to pivot up and down enough that you can stand up here yeah. and still hold the tiller. Yeah, that made a big difference in there when we were sailing his boat up, having the like extension. Yeah. I think just making it pivot vertically, yeah. Yeah, but I just feel like you could use the extension, but if the whole tiller was pivot, it would be kind of cool to just have that thing. Because then you could stand there, you could stand in the cockpit, you could sit in the cockpit, and it yeah. wouldn't really matter. And then also, if the tiller goes up, we'll be able to get into that aft hatch. Okay. It's going to be pretty tight. Yeah, or you'd have to move it all the way over, which is... You're not going to do underway. Nope. Hold on, folks. We're going to do a UE so we can open the aft hatch. <laughs> nice. Alex has got the sill plate here fit to the car lens and the beams that go around the house. And the sill plate is fairly important. The decking is going to butt up against it on the outside here. And that'll end up getting cocked. So there'll be quite a bit of pressure being pushed inward. And then the house is going to get built up out of long lengths of cedar like this, except, you know, a lot longer. And they're going to go on here like so. And these will be all uh, epoxy and nailed together to make up the house. And then on the inside, we're gonna make something sort of like this. Uh, this is very, very, very rough, and it's just to give you an idea. Um, but this is gonna end up being a grab rail that goes around the whole inside of the house. And we can nip these off a little bit shorter, and we can put some counter bores in here so that they'll fit over all of those tie rod bolts and cover those up. And it'll, it'll provide some support for the um, inward pressure from the decking on the sill here, because we'll bolt it through the carlin here. And the other thing it'll do is it'll go up and it'll extend far enough to go past the first piece of the cedar for the house. And that'll essentially make a little ledge that the house will sit on and nestle against. And that way the house can't move uh, port to starboard or fore and after or anything. It'll be boxed in by those grab rails. And we have some really, really lovely hardwoods uh, that we can do these grab rails with. And it'll extend those basically all the way around the inside of the house. And the other thing that'll be nice is the port lights are up here. And if the port lights have some condensation or if the well of the port light collects some water in it and you open the port light, uh, it should hopefully get caught in this. And we'll be able to just take a sponge or a rag or whatever and clean that up. Uh, so it'll act as kind of like a drip catchment underneath all of the port lights down the side of the house. From this angle, we can really start to see kind of how everything's going to get tied together and play together here, work together. So if you notice the sill, it's going to get screwed down and it's going to get screwed up and in from both directions. And that ends up capturing 
all of our short beams here. So you can see these short beams, they can't go for an aft because they're in the notches. They can't go down because of that shelf and because of the angles. So if the shelf wasn't quite right, those angles would fetch up real quick. It can't go far. And then it's capped with the sill plate here. So there's no way to lift that up. And then it's held in with the tie rod. So the screw that's holding the short beam in that we had put in earlier it was basically there just to register the short beam and to keep it from moving throughout this process. We could take that screw out and I think you'd be really hard pressed to get the short beam out of here. And I think whether or not that screw there is probably wouldn't even make much of a difference in how hard that fight was. So this sill is wider and taller than the house is going to be and the decking is going to be. So this is what our house is going to be made up out of. And you can see we've got some extra here and this chunk of rough pine here is the same dimensions of the decking. So the decking will go fore and aft like this, and we're going to take this corner and we're going to route that out in a little bit, make it disappear so that we have a nice transition from the deck up to the house. And by having the sill plate a little bit wider, it gives us uh, availability of the caulking seam here. So if the caulking seam was right below the house, you can still caulk that and they make bent um, caulking irons for it but it's gonna be a lot easier to have that house in a little bit and to have that nice transition and be able to just put a normal caulking iron in there and swing your mallet and not have to be bumping up against the house. And then like we said earlier, the grab rails are gonna go on the inside and that is gonna add one more element of support to all of this. Because when we put the caulking in here, it's gonna be pushing on this sill, which is tied to our car lin, which is pulling on the tie rods. So we want to make sure that this sill and then the car lin below it and these tie rod are all working as one. And having all of these screws go through and having the bolts that are going to go down through the house and through, and then adding the grab rail bolted through on the inside uh, will make all of that really rigid. And if this would want to spread in, it's got a lot of material stopping it. And then on the aft end here, we have the doubled up deck beams, and that's so that when the decking comes in, we have a landing spot for the end of it. And that's why we have these doubled up deck beams at every opening for the hatches, for the house, for the cockpit, so that when we put the decking running fore and aft, we have a spot for it to land. Sitting here at the tiller. Iceberg dead ahead! I hope we never say that. Well, we got ourselves a cockpit mock-up. So this is not the finished cockpit, don't worry. We are not making it out of cheap half-inch plywood and uh, deck screws and washers. Um, but we really wanted to do a mock-up and get a feel for kind of what it would be like to live and function with this size cockpit and see if we want to make it shallower or deeper. Um, we can't change the dimensions fore and aft and widthwise too much at this point without tearing the aft deck apart. Um, but we definitely can play with its depth. We've got some planks on the side that are one and a half inches thick. That's as thick as the decking's going to be. And you'll notice that we've put a whole bunch of holes in it. And these aft holes here, we have a pair of small port lights that were originally in Victoria's cockpit. And we're going to mount those in there and you can open those up and gain some more ventilation towards the aft end of the boat. And then these big rectangular ones uh, are we're going to put in deck prisms. So if you're not familiar with deck prisms are, is traditionally they're made to go in the deck and they are, as they say, a prism. Um, so they're made of glass and they're designed so that they refract the light. So the light hits them and they just send it off in all different directions and they are very illuminating. Uh, and we had some person, whoever this is, thank you. I don't quite remember who it was, but we were talking to them about deck prisms and they mentioned how they often leak and they get scratched in the deck and they don't work as well and they're kind of a pain. But they said one of the best places they had ever seen them put was in the sides of a cockpit and that they were unobtrusive, that they were vertical, so they were a lot less likely to leak and it gave a ton of room into an otherwise often very dark uh, area of the boat with no natural light. And as we know, natural light is great for killing microorganisms and bacteria and all of that jazz, uh, as well as drying things out. So getting natural light in underneath the cockpit and around the engine compartment, is gonna be really, really handy. So we mocked these up, figuring that we would get three big prisms. 
and put those in there and they would shine a ton of light down below the cockpit and around the engine. The forward one will shine on the mast and aid some more light by the nav station and the galley, which would be really handy. And we still have plenty of room on the sides here um, to mount throttle controls and all of that for the engine. So there's plenty of options when that time comes. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind with the cockpit is that you're probably gonna have a seat underneath you and we can adjust the height of the seats a little bit and we can also put or remove a grating in the bottom of the cockpit as we want it as well. So we're just trying to get an idea for the height, but we do realize that at the end, um, we have a couple inches of wiggle room between cushions and grating and whatnot. Uh, but it's pretty cool to, to kind of sit here and grab Victoria's tiller and imagine what this is gonna be like someday. I can't wait. It's pretty cool to, to see it all evolving. Yeah, kind of get an idea what this is gonna be like. Probably a little longer tiller, but. This one's seen some use, Victoria's old one. So it'll obviously, it'll get mounted in the rudder head, which will be up here a little bit higher. And then I think I'd like to make it so that it has some play up and down so that you could sit here with it kind of like that, or you could stand up and have it. And it would be really nice if you could even get up on deck and just reach down to it. So you can get some more fields of view and setting it up on the cheeks to have that much of a range of motion, I don't think will be too difficult or a hindrance. And the other thing is we have the aft hatch here. So if you can lift that to like there, you'll be able to take that hatch off and have access to it while you're underway. Because otherwise you'd have to go hard to port or starboard to open up the hatch and you're not gonna to wanna to do that when you're sailing. <laughs> like, hold on guys, we're gonna do a quick UE so we can open up the aft hatch. Um, so, it should be pretty easy to, to set up and do. Next week, the house sill will get the anti-fouling paint. That means it's done for now. They'll have to wait for warmer weather to glue up the house sides. So Steve and Alex will move on to finishing the remaining bronze floors. Thanks once again for watching, liking, subscribing, and for all your support. See you next week.